Alright. Ooh. I think we have audio. Do we have audio now? It just popped up, I think. Ooh. Yep. We got audio. I think we have audio. Alright. We have audio. They can hear our voices. Alright, so. Audio. Do we have audio now? Just up, I think. Cool. All right. Yeah, what it was is uh, there was a stream setting right here that for some reason didn't allow me to uh, add the tracks until afterwards. All right, so I'm going to start. Hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully you can hear us now. Uh, I'm Marco Guerrero, and this is Michael Baras Berkowitz, Berkowitz, <laughs> something like that, right? We're just messing with you with last names right now. I'm just horrible with names. And PJ Harsma. It's a tough one. But Harsma. 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 I'm the worst when it comes to names, uh, especially trying to remember names after I've met somebody. It's impossible. <laughs> uh, I'm awful at that. Just awful. Just awful. Well, at least your first name is so easy to remember. PJ, it's just like... I've, I've switched back to my original name thanks to uh, California's I, real ID. Because my real name's not PJ. My real name is John. Yeah. So PJ's a, PJ's a nickname. So all my ideas, either PJ or Philip John or John Philip. So I just made life real simple and I went back to PJ. Because I'm also trying to get my Canadian passport back, you know, just in case shit goes south in November. <laughs> so, and I'm trying to get my Dutch passport so I have a third option in case shit goes really bad. There you go. So, I like having options. We made it about so, a minute in, du and here we go. Dutch, that's <laughs> Holland, right? Or is that? Yeah. Right. Well, see, Holland is, is technically a province or, or a state or something, and they like to call themselves the Netherlands now. Right. But Holland is what everybody knows. Yeah, it's from um, days gone by. We do have a viewer from the Netherlands. Uh, he's always in here, I think. Uh, he's he might be end up watching. Uh, I'll see if he pops in. It's one of my favorite countries in the world. I've been there over a dozen times. I highly suggest everybody go hang out in Amsterdam or Sanford or anywhere. Anywhere is good. Perfect. Um, all right, so let's get this started. So PJ, um, yes, my friend. you're an author, a writer. I guess an author and a writer. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I like I like being an author, but I hate writing. There you go. You also <laughs> direct and produce. Um, you have a, you. a book series called Softwire uh -huh. that is coming out again soon, correct? Yeah, we're re-releasing it as The Rings of Orbis. Four books are coming out. and uh, The called The Wand Chasers, that's going to come out on there. Uh, so we're, we're really just expanding on all these IPs that we've been sitting on for years and just making them available on Kindle Unlimited so people can read them. All right. And so, again, that was the Rings of Orbis series, and you're, uh, that's the rebranded name, correct? Yeah, yeah, Rings of Orbis. And can you tell us a little bit about the series? Well, it's about a group of kids that get orphaned in outer space, and then they're sold as slaves to these aliens. When they get there, they find out that the first kid is this genetic alteration that's a million years advanced for kids, like for humans, I mean. And uh, the entire place where they're sent to, to work, these four planet-like rings, the entire thing is controlled by one supercomputer. And this kid, his ability is he can go inside computers. And the fact that he can get in this computer at will drives the aliens crazy. And they want to own him. They want to kill him. They want to just possess him and his sister. So uh, it's, it's fun. Uh, I think the first one is going to come out in about two weeks uh, on, on, Amazon, on Kindle Unlimited. Cool. Uh, I really enjoyed him. Um, you also did a uh, Kickstarter web series with uh, Alan Trudick. Uh, called Con Man, right? Yeah, Alan Tudyk, Nathan Fillion. Uh, we did uh, 
we, we basically independently financed a TV series through Kickstarter. We had originally done the traditional route of, of how TV is supposed to be sold and it really wasn't going anywhere. And people were, you know, everybody wants to put their finger on it and not, uh, follow the creator's vision, which Alan's vision was absolutely brilliant. So we were off to go do this bad deal with legendary and, uh, we weren't having any, and we went and, uh, at the last second decided to go do it ourselves. And we went to the firefly community and said, Hey, we want to make this thing. Do you guys want to be part of it? And they gave us $3 million in 30 days and we created con man and then Lionsgate loved it and they grabbed it and went and put it on sci-fi and then we just stopped doing it. <laughs> yeah. Saddest day of my life. That's uh that's a bummer. I really We were supposed to do we were supposed to do eight seasons. We optioned eight seasons. Really? Wow. Yeah. That, that, I did not know that. I got to go on set yeah. a couple times. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was one of the best things I've ever made in my life. You talked to Nate Nolan. It was one of his favorite things. Talk to Mindy, one of her favorite things. Oh. I met so many people that are still friends from there. It was just, it was one of those things in your life that I will always be proud of making. And the thing is, is it is amazing work and amazing quality for a TV series, like even on HBO. And it was a web series. Yeah. Yeah. We made that thing for peanuts in the beginning. Uh, and we spawned a comic book, a game. Uh, you know, there's so much that came out of that. I, I, I love that. I, I, I loved it. Uh, there was a game? Yeah. Mobile. The con man, the game. On a, it was an, an app. You had to run a convention, and then you were always having yeah. problems, and you had to, like, budget, like, celebrities and concessions <laughs> and the unruly fans and all that kind of stuff. You also did a game for the software series as well. Um, yeah, that was an old school Flash HTML game. It was one of the first video games ever made for a book. It was featured on the cover of New York Times. You know, me and Frank Bedore were when we were doing our books. We were like, our agent told us, you know, our, our publisher said, "Listen, you got to be on the internet." This was back in two hundred three, I think. Uh, everybody's on the internet, and we went and looked at all these famous websites that were by books, and we we're like, "Who the hell would ever go to these things?" You know what I mean? Like we were writing for teens and stuff, and and uh, I went to look where people were hanging out back in the day, and they were hanging out at things like Neopets and, and Club Penguin, and eventually Zynga came up. And I was like, <laughs> we got to make that. And so I created uh, ringsoforbis.com. It's gone now. And I learned how to code. I had one other coder with me that helped teach me. And uh, I just went to all these big comic book artists. And me and another guy, we built that game. By, from scratch, coded, hand coded, online, and that thing ran for ten years. That that had fans. To this day, I still talk to people that used to play that game. And then I and then I built a card soldier wars for Frank, uh, to, uh, and did the same thing for that. God, that was those were fun times. It was just we didn't we didn't have the formula like Zynga had, where you know that churn and burn type right. thing where tricking people to get in there and stay and stuff like that we just wanted to make a great place for people to hang out between books the problem is we we're too stupid to figure out how to make money from it so that 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 was our fault and so by yeah. frank you're referring to frank Bedore who did the looking glass wars and the, yeah. the Mad or the hatter m comic series the hatter m comics yeah yeah and so for all those remember from a previous podcast i met pj uh, through Frank. Frank had a booth at uh, New York Comic Con next to mine, and he liked my art cards that I had done uh, for Heroes. And uh, so when I was at the LA convention, Comic Con or whatever it was at the time, I think it might have been like a Wizard World one or just a local one in LA. Um, I was there, Frank was there, and you had a booth with PJ. And then you both came back over to my booth to check out the art cards because uh, you, are, I think, were interested in doing some kind of cards for uh, the Rings of Orbis series. Yeah. And you saw that I had all of the signed comics from Firefly and Serenity, except for I didn't have Nathan. And it, it was sitting there, and you're like, yeah. And you're like, why don't you have Nathan? And I was like, oh, he turned me down. He didn't want to sign. And then you were like, well, that doesn't sound like him. And then I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, that doesn't sound like Nathan at all. You know what? Let me talk to him. I'm staying at his house this weekend. And I'm like, you are? 
<laughs> and you're like, yeah. I'm like, cool. That would be amazing. And then like a month or so later, I get a call or an email from Nathan like, hey, yeah, I'm going to be in New York and I'm going to have like a six hour layover and uh, I can pop into the office and send those comics for you. I'm like, that would be great. And, you know, it all went down. It was amazing. And it was a lot of fun. And I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you track people down for signing. Like, with, the, with dealing with Spectrum Comics and Con Men and dealing with people that mob guys for signatures and, like, come up to them with, with 10 pristine boxes and say, it's for my kids. And they're, <laughs> you know, and they're just selling those things on eBay and stuff. Like, that signing thing got old fast for me. It's it's such a it's such a it's such a hard biz, man. I don't know how you do well, it. I just don't. I know. separate because a I pay the actors, and b I always make it simple as possible. We meet up. I've been doing them over Zoom now lately each month. Yeah, and yeah. I don't gouge people on the prices. Like my autograph for the month club is twenty bucks a month. Right? Yeah, and uh, we set it up. We do the signing. Uh, I ship them out, um, and. It works. It's great. People enjoy it. The The signings are a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, at the, at the end of the day, the actor's getting, you know, you know, a lot of money for an hour or so of their time, you know, where, yeah. you know, at the end of the day. And, and people love those things. It's funny. It's, you know, I, I was bad in the sense that, you know, Nathan's my friend. I, you know, we, we hang out. We don't really enjoy each other's work. And, and I never watched Firefly. And uh, and he was mad at me. It's just what do you mean you never watch Firefly? You don't care about what my career is. I go, buddy, I'm busy. I, I just I don't have a TV. I didn't. I haven't watched Firefly. So he he. I was leaving his house and he goes, here, watch it. And he handed me a DVD set. Like this is how long after the fact that I hadn't watched it. And uh, and I get home and I look at the thing he gave me, and it's signed by Joss Whedon. It's uh, it's like it's literally signed by every director. All the DVDs are signed by different people. Like this thing is just a cornucopia of signatures, and uh, and and he gave that to me, and I have that, and it was missing the first DVD because it was still in his DVD player, right. and so, so like I have all these crazy signed things. I got Mark Hamill stuff signed. Like I got this. It's just all over the place. Like I have upstairs in my bedroom. I've got a first editions of the Twilight that was sent to me by Stephanie Myers to give to Sky for Christmas. Like, I got signed stuff. Like I, I bet you can pull one, one of these books from behind me, and there's a signature on there. So, and we come to our studio. The place is just packed with that stuff. So about four weeks ago, our studio got broken into. What? And they and they came in, and they stole all our cameras. Like, they went around, and they lifted all the cameras off all the tripods. And, and then went into the camera car. I think we lost five cameras, all the lenses. They stole our server, and Drew and I are in there, and we're standing in front of this. It's It's got to be, I don't know how tall it is. It's like eight feet by eight feet, and it's just packed with priceless signed shit, yeah. and they didn't they didn't touch it. That happened. They had, a friend of mine uh, opened up a shop in Vegas called Nerdgasm. Yeah. And while they were remodeling and working, uh, somebody broke in and, like, stole – you know, uh, so something stupid, like a couple of stupid things that ran out, but like all surrounding this thing was like, uh, first edition Spider-Man graded, like, Gosh, you know, you know, just thing. like there was millions and million dollars worth of comic books and, you know, Avengers signed shields, you know, I mean, they compared to what the dude stole was just <laughs> insane. You yeah, can always tell no idea. Yeah, they had no idea. When somebody comes into the studio and they know, they know. Right. Like, yeah. and there, there's little things hidden everywhere. Like, I got on the wall uh, switch plate by one of the lights is a uh, is a Firefly. It's like one of those Firefly metal plates that identify the ship. Right. And it's signed oh, by oh. Nathan, and it's just glued to the wall underneath the, underneath one of the light switches. And so you see the person when they go and they t and they walk by and it's like, oh, oh. And then other people are like, I don't know what that is. What's that? The thing is, yeah, you can uh, you can instantly tell when somebody knows. Autographs yeah. are such a niche thing, right? Yeah. Um, some of some people they don't collect. Uh, the ones that do, love it, right? Um, and they work great for gifts, 
Like if you just want to give somebody something that you don't know what, what to get them and you know what their favorite show or some of their favorite actors are, autographs work amazing. Yeah. Uh, autographs yeah, are yeah. also kind of like a souvenir when you go to a convention and you meet somebody, right? Uh, those autographs usually just end up in a drawer somewhere. It's like when you go to Magic Mountain, you ride the ride, right? And then you get the picture mm -hmm. at the end. You know, you didn't go for the picture. You went to ride the ride, you know. And, and it's the it, same with the Con Man DVDs. People were like, why are you making Con Man DVDs? Nobody, nobody watches DVDs anymore. I go, well, they're not, they're not to watch. They're to sign. And that's yeah. the number one thing people used to come by the con, grab a DVD, run over to the cast and get it signed. Well, what was your first experience? Either A, getting an autograph or B, giving an autograph or signing one that you remember? Uh, the, one of the experiences, the first time I ever signed autographs was when I started touring for the Softwire books. And Frank Bedore and I went together and did a, a Barnes & Nobles tour down in San Diego. And there, the, oh, both of our books had followers. Was it San Diego or was it Arizona? I can't remember. But what they were, these kids wanted to get signatures. And then Frank and I, Frank's very competitive. I'm very competitive. We're going back and forth. And by the end of the day, we were signing the children that were there. And there, <laughs> when the, like one kid came up and had Frank's signature in Sharpie across her forehead. <laughs> uh, yeah, like we got a little out of hand. We got a little out of hand. I do remember us hanging out, you, me, and Frank at Comic Con, and one of the stories I like to tell was the time we went to the the party at the Hard Rock. I can't remember which was for, but you both had passes and I didn't have one, so we came up with like an elaborate plan to sneak me in, and like Frank was gonna, uh, Frank was going to distract him while you, me, kind of just we're just going to waltz in while he was talking to the to the guy, and it was, and it worked. We ended up getting me in, and you know. So much work to get into those parties, oh, and everybody and those, that EW party was is the one that everybody wants to get into, and it's just I I was actually glad there wasn't Comic Con this year, I really was. It's the first time I haven't gone, and I mean I remember the first time I went to Comic Con in San Diego, I walked in, yeah. I just walked in. I mean, no lines, no nothing, bought a ticket, walked in. Yeah, same with they're, they're, it's crazy. Yeah, I used to get dealer passes all the time, and I would just go sit in Ballroom Twenty, watch the pilots for all the new TV shows. And then uh, it was pretty amazing. Um, so, big, so back to Con Man. You kickstarted. At, at the time, it was one of the fastest or one of the, the largest kickstarters at the time, wasn't it? It's, it, was, it, it, was the, it, had, it had records at the time. It was the second largest entertainment raise at the time. It got beat quickly, though, by that one TV show. Veronica Mars. The following month. No, it, we we were just behind Veronica Mars, and then what was that cop show? That number two cop thing that came and beat us. Axe Cop, or something. No, I can't remember what what it was called. Those that five comedy troupe things, and they went and raised that. Oh, that the us. Reno Nine One One. Yeah, it was like that show, but it was called something else. Anyways, there was that. So that beat us literally the next month. But we got we were the most raised in a day at the time it was a million dollars, the fastest to a million dollars inside twenty four hours. Like it was a, it, there was a lot of things. It was good. It was good times. And I know people re really loved it. I know Alan and you did a lot of conventions for a couple of years before you started working and writing that. Now I always thought you were also a writer on that with Alan, right? Or was it all Alan? Alan was the writer on that. Alan and I had created another project prior to that called Let's Ask Alan, mm -hmm. and it was a spoof where Alan lived in a message box controlled by a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the gorilla fed him messages that Al, about Alan Tudyk that he had to answer. And there's one where he explains his name and he pisses the gorilla off. So the gorilla does subtitles that aren't what Alan's saying. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> and it's never been seen. I have it. It's just, it's brilliant. When, when are we going to uh, release that? I, yeah, call, out, call Alan Tudyk. It's, uh, and then from that, then we said we want to do something else. And then we, we start, he wanted me to shoot Con Man. Uh, and then I was like, you know, to, to direct it. And I was like, you know what, I, I, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little comfortable with that. I go, I'd love to produce it. Let's, let me make it for you. Um, and then it, it went that way. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of work and a lot of fun. Alan's a genius. He's a perfectionist and it shows in the work. And uh, yeah, I remember, like I said, best thing I ever made. It was during season two. 
I came out uh, on set. I think it was to pick up some autographs from Alan. And I got some of the prop autographs from season one that you yeah. guys got for me. And uh, it was the the juice bar uh, sequence. And, oh, that's season two, yeah. And then you guys were having issues with the, the building. And they were, you, like, out of nowhere, they, like, kicked you guys out of there. Yeah, yeah, there was the other people in the building. They didn't like it. But that goes with the people making the deals and not telling the other people what in the building what it's really going to be like. And, like, we would send people over. Like, the ice cream store at the front of it was the worst. And so we just sent everybody over there. We gave them, like, $500. Just buy whatever ice cream you want to make these people happy. And it still wasn't enough. Because then they hmm. just smelled money. And they just wanted right. money. You know, so, yeah, that happens too. Yeah, I was, uh, I was hanging but out at the donor shop next door yeah the writing i did with alan i wrote the comic books with alan the spectrum comic books that we did from that mm -hmm. that's what i wrote and um i know on uh, let me take a look here let's talk about that for a second let me set this up um while you're doing that i was telling i was telling marco before we before you popped in I was saying that now my new one of my new Grail autographs because I am an autograph collector. I'm one of those niche people. Mm -hmm. Is now a uh, Alan Tudyk signed uh, Ray Nearly action yeah. figure doll. Oh really? That's a rare one. Do you have one? I don't have one. I I would love to find one. I think it's uh, a funny that there's, there's there are so many two made and I have two of them. Yeah. I could it's... I could give you a box. Oh, you know who has the box? I gave signed Ray Nearly Doll boxes to is I gave them all to uh, Utah Browncoats. Ah. So they, you track them down. They have signed Ray Nearly boxes with the fake Ray Nearly picture, the doll in there that we That's use awesome. on the set. So they, I gave it all to them. I gave them a lot of stuff. Yeah. To, Marco to is Marco is saying he has uh, pictures that are signed by Alan Tudyk and also signed Ray Nearly, yeah. which is, I have. Those I think. Things. I think it's so cool. You're talking about how he's a perfectionist, and I, I definitely uh, enjoy the. How much did you have to do with all of the little? I mean, there's almost in con man. I feel like there's constantly in the background little Easter egg things, like the entire show. There's, there's so things many. Not, there's so, so many you don't. So many that people missed. That's all. That's all, Alan. That's one. 100% Alan. Nolan North did a lot, like Nolan North was one of the guys that was allowed to just do whatever he wanted. He, yeah. he did a bunch of things. But Alan, I swear, he hates it when I call him this, but he's a freaking genius. He's a comedy <laughs> genius. It's sad that he doesn't get more credit than he does. Like, you know. He, yeah, it's really great. I was cracking at the bartender every time. That was. Love that. that. Was, that yeah, was so those good. little things like little subtle things like that are just so. All right, so uh, it's you have to ask: Is the bartender real? Is the bartender <laughs> he's only about halfway through season. I think he just started season two. So yeah, I I binge season one, and I'm about halfway through season two. And it's funny because there's just every episode gives you some iconic thing. Like my wife loves Leslie Jordan. I'm like, I need to show you this Leslie Jordan episode. Well, I love the uh, the old guy who's the female stunt screamer. Oh yeah, does her own screams. <laughs> Leslie Jordan, Leslie Jordan. You know, because we did a lot of this with friends, and we went around agents and we just called people up and said, "You want to do this?" And you know, that upsets agents because they don't get to negotiate. And we called Leslie Jordan up to come be in this. And I'm driving home. I remember just pulling out right up front here. And I get a phone call, and it's from Leslie Jordan's agent at the time. And he's like, hey, PJ. And I go, hey, what are you doing? And he goes, yeah, yeah blah, blah, blah. So uh, Leslie's got an offer for the librarians that is way better than con men. And I knew this. And I go, yeah. And he <laughs> goes, and I'm like, yeah, so? And, and he goes, well, I got to do my job, and I got I got no more money. And so does Leslie still want to do it? And he's like. Leslie told me to stick everything else up my ass because I have to say the words that Alan Tudyk wrote me. So <laughs> it did. He would have done it for free. I mean, pretty much did it for free. He he wanted to do those lines so bad, and it's his character is uh, the the stuff Alan wrote for him is just amazing. It's so funny. Yeah, that whole that whole episode about the the straight society and 
Oh, that was great. The, oh, that was fun. But uh, I, I'm going to mute you. It's going to mute you guys for one second while I add you to this next scene here. All right, so now, uh, now you guys are unmuted. Uh, so unmuted. You, let's talk a little bit. You have this uh, something new here called the Red Bear Publishing. Yeah, Red Bear Publishing is uh, where we're going to be uh, pushing out our IP. So like I said, the Softwire books are coming out there. They're going to be called the Rings of Orbis series. We've got another book series called the Wand Chasers. We're going to expand on the Rings of Orbis. We've got another book series uh, called uh, Monster Hunters Club. And we have partnered with uh, Shannon Eric Denton's Comic Works and Actionopolis Comic Works, you know, with a, that had that Stan Lee deal. So those are all under the same umbrella. Okay. So we're we're really excited getting back in that game. And so yeah, I see here you have uh, so are these books from Actionopolis, uh, uh, and then you also have the comics here, which were the Spectrum ones, and yeah. a lot of the autograph of the month clubs that that month that uh, Alan. Signed, uh, all yeah. got the Spectrum uh, Zero book you gave me. Everybody got oh, one. Cool. So, uh, I don't know, Terry. Some of you guys who were here early on uh, should all have that Spectrum comic. That Spectrum comic was the biggest print for an independent comic for Free Comic Book Day. They printed the same as they did for Spider Man. Wow. Yeah. And then there's a special edition that came out with that one. It's a purple cover that was done for a comic book store that hosted a, a thing there. It's a purple one. The one here. I think I got. Yeah, it's on the. Screen. Yeah, it's on the screen cover right now. with Nathan. Yeah, that's there's only I think there's only a thousand of those or five hundred of those ever made. Yeah, it says a limited to a thousand. So if you guys go to redbearpublishing.com right now, uh, you can purchase it. Um, yeah, it was limited to a thousand. Um, I don't. I don't even think there's a thousand. Like I think I only have like, I might have a hundred left. Oh, those are that says date published August fourth. That's recent. No, that's just what I put up on this site. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's just up on the site. I don't even know if you can buy those yet. I don't. I haven't put them in the store. Oh, okay. I put I, everything I put in. I, I we're putting everything. This is all a preview, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. I, this that, is a sneak peek. Yeah, that I don't even know if that should be up yet. Um, if you go to uh, okay, if you go to the retro replay show dot com shop, well, it, then you can you can buy the comic book signed there. What? So, it's, yeah. so what's the website again? Retro replay show dot com forward slash shop. And down in the bottom, I have a couple comic books left. I have the Firefly books left. They're signed. So I got retro replay. Them. Uh, show show dot com dot com forward slash shop. So let's talk a little bit about Retro Replay with uh, Nolan. If you guys so don't know, he's an he, amazing voice actor. And actor. yeah, he's he's uh, his big claim to fame. I mean, that guy's in so many shows, but he's Nathan Drake from Uncharted. So uh, and he's in the new Avengers game too, as well as he plays uh, Nathan uh, no Stark Tony Stark. So uh, it was a bromance. I, when, he, when Alan told me he was going to be in comment, I was like, Nolan who? I didn't know <laughs> who he was. He was replacing somebody that I was excited to see. And I was a little mad. I was like, what are we doing? Like, who is this guy? I don't know who the hell this is. And I met him, and I instantly fell in love with him. I, I love that guy like a brother. I can't tell you how awesome he is. And then we wanted to do something together. We were just looking for that thing to do together. And uh, uh, we were going to do this behind the scenes thing with uh, Uncharted and the video games that he does and, and all that sort of stuff. And my other partner, uh, Drew Lewis, uh, he pitched this idea about having Nolan on the couch playing video games. And uh, Retro Replay was born. And we have in season three now. It's been tough going through COVID because we can't get people in the yeah. studio. Uh, we had Troy Baker on for a while. He's gone off to do his own stuff. Uh, we're coming back, uh, hopefully real soon, down in the basement. And uh, we're having a blast. Cool. We have you know, Retro Replay Popper. We have advice from Uncle Noli. And we've got another uh, con man 
uh, alum, uh, Liam McIntyre and his buddy, uh, Todd LaSance are going to start a new show on our channel called Get Good uh, from Australia in uh, in the, the 28th. <laughs> For those that don't know, Liam is huge into video games, especially like Xbox and Gears of War. And he, I see him on Twitter all the time. But uh, Yeah, so him and, him and Todd got a new show starting. So a lot with Retro Replay. We're putting a lot of love and energy in Retro Replay. So you should check it out. It's on YouTube. All right, so I'm at the shop right now, and I'm blown away about your prices here. Uh, yeah, you've got a signed cool. comic by Nathan and Alan, right? Uh -huh. For forty dollars. And PJ. And PJ. And, is, and me, I'll sign and it too. And don't, yeah, PJ signed that too. Uh, well, see, you didn't, you didn't, uh, you didn't bold your name there, PJ. So I didn't, I didn't know. I'm modest. <laughs> so yeah, you have the comic signed by Nathan, Alan, and PJ, uh, for forty dollars. And there's a really cool Firefly book that is ninety bucks, signed by Nathan. That book and is, Alan. That book alone is worth. Is there a story dollars. behind that book? That book looks really cool. So when uh, we were doing the uh, when we were doing the fundraiser, we needed a, a mid mid funnel type product to add uh, to get people to donate, and we couldn't think of anything. And Nathan Firefly photos on my phone from when I was on set. Why don't we make a book? <laughs> So we put, downloaded all that stuff from his phone. Most of those were never seen before. And then we printed that book and, uh, and we made, again, that was only a thousand. I don't have many left of those. I only have a few signed ones left too. I'm going to go ahead and reserve a, one right now. Yeah. Reserve, reserve a signed copy for Marco and I. Okay. So I'll pull it out. <laughs> so I'm going to the studio Friday to shoot, so I'll I'll, I'll yank some for you. I have to say yeah, that retro, retro replay for everybody go on to, to YouTube and like, subscribe to Retro Replay. That Please. set yeah. is insane. The power yeah, like there's a, when you talk about uh Easter eggs, that set yeah. and how did you get that TV? I, I love that you did the retro replay on the, the speaker grills. And but so you want to know how we did it? We wanted this old TV. So the idea was is that in the room they would move around, and so you had to see the TV. So we were searching for this one particular TV, that TV that we wanted, and we found this little old lady from a nursing home that was sold it to us for twenty five dollars, and we <laughs> had to go and Drew and I rented a truck and we drove to this little old lady's. Uh, it was not a nursing home. It's like a like a, a senior care facility. And we went in there and just lifted that heavy thing up, and we brought it in there, and we changed the way we shot it, and it never showed up in the show. So oh. it, we have the shot. We cut to it, but it's never in the shots because <laughs> the game is from the POV of the TV. So it's still sitting in the studio, but we don't uh, we don't use it. So those other comics, the other ones, the purple one and the other versions, I got to get those up on their website. I, I've just been slack, but I'll get the other comics up there too. Yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. Those, like like uh, Marco said, the I think I think that the ninety dollars is worth it for Nathan and Tudic alone. Not to mention you get a limited edition book of photos from Nathan. It's just crazy. Yeah, that's that so cool. uh, that'll be gone. When that's gone, that's gone. Yeah, that's so cool. Their hand, we we just like you know one of those companies where you make the books yourself. Right. So that's 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 how we had them done. And that's one of those things too. I th I feel like you know that like you're talking about the Firefly plate. That's one of those things where somebody, I think people like Marco and I would. Uh, that's like a treasure, and it's either going to be it's that it's that thing where it's either going to be like somebody's most prized possession treasure, or somebody's going to look at it and go, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't think of the one thing that I have. Do I have anything signed that's precious to me? I don't. I can't think of. I can't. I can't come up with one well, thing. I'll pull up right now. I'm, I've got the retro replay up right now. So people are looking at the set. So you got the power glove in the back, the window, that couch. Um, oh, there's so many Easter eggs in there. You can't see them all. There is, there is, so the software books are on there. You've got uh, different uh, Funko characters. There's all kinds of old school stuff on there. Stephen King books. Like, it's all old yeah, retro. Yeah, you got the retro. Game Boy. I see the, the little portal for, or the little cube from, um, 
Was it Dynasty or Destiny? No. That, 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 that's handmade. That was that actually works. That's handmade by a, a prop guy, uh, a great kid. Uh, loved the guy. Him and his buddy. Uh, they make them for us, and uh, they made a gun too. So that's on the set there too. You just don't get to see it all. Yeah. Then this is the TV that I was talking about when they they cut to it. Yeah, we so still this have is, that. Sits in the makeup. Yeah. So this was. Uh, uh, what do you call it? The the TV. So obviously that's CGI, or right? We did like a blue screen. Yeah, we lay that in on that. The TV. It's a, a still shot that we took, and then we lay that stuff in on the TV screen. Yeah, I like the retro replay on the speakers and stuff like that. Like I said, it's it's a fun show. Uh, they're both uh, amazing, uh, and uh, they play off each other very very well. But again, like I said, the production value that you put into these shows is insane man you're like it's thank you we're old school it's got to be done done good none of this throw your phone up and shoot the shit we, we it's had three cameras set up it's lit to death we love it the sound quality well, you know it's as, just, you, like as you can see we're inspired i mean we've got i've got my mario you know my big trouble little china I like it. you know you know that's just one percent of my collection so let's just go there yeah, this is we we threw this stuff up just, and this is always changing behind us. But I love the I love that setup with just throw stuff in the back to catch people's eyes every once. What in a while. would you say yeah, is we, your guilty pleasure, PJ? Because like, we're like autographs and pops and collectibles. What do you have? I was going to say something dirty, but I can't. Um, <laughs> my guilty pleasure. He took he took the guilty pleasure literally. Yeah, I did. Totally did. <laughs> you know, I, I have two young girls, and I work all the time. My guilty pleasure is a bottle of wine to myself. Um, I don't, you know, do, I used to collect guitars. Mm -hmm. You know, that was that that was a thing. But then storing them and getting them, you know, and buying them gets expensive. I uh, oh, I know, I have a guilty pleasure that I collect religiously, and I have fans that still send them to me. Is I collect and create a Christmas time with Department Fifty Six Snow Village. To part, to part, what, what is that? I have never heard. Look it up. Look up Department 56. Just All right, while well, I'm looking it up. Uh, You're going to have a whole different opinion of me now. Uh, so I literally build an entire Christmas village. On one side is Charles Dickens. In the middle, it's Santa Claus in the North Pole. And on the right-hand side, it's the Elf's Village. And I build it over the fireplace. It has a train set that goes into it. It's legit, man. It is legit. It's all lit up. It takes me about two days to build. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show everybody. We actually have, we actually have at my work. Um, so I work in I work in public safety and communications, and uh, we share a building with uh, Department of Transportation for Oregon. And one of the employees for them every year creates one of those things, and but they go like a sci-fi kind of twist to it, to where yeah. it's always a village being attacked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so there's always like they'll find like little like little ant like ant toys and stuff and the ants or roaches are crawling on the buildings destroying things and I just great. looked up department 56 and the thing comes up and goes signing event and, the, <laughs> and there's a guy Scott Enter signs it I'm like ooh maybe I should do that I got two of them sitting here in boxes that I got in the mail from uh, a fan that sends me one for the village every year K Cat, she she sends me one. I, I got uh, I, I'm running out of room. Well, so yeah, does your so do you do you just expand on your village every year? Well, because in the house that I have right now, I have a limited space. It's like I have a two level thing over my fireplace that I build and put it. I got this big round fireplace that I put it on there, so it's limited. So I can, I maxed out. So I switch out different buildings during the year. I mean during the the period because I, I my set's too big to put everything up. Oh, gotcha. Michael just got a signed guitar uh, last month. I did. I had. I got in a in a uh, premium autograph mystery box, which is what we do on our channel. Yeah. Um, we do we do autograph mystery box, and I I pulled a uh, Angus Young autograph wow. guitar. Wow, yeah. that would be that would mean something to me. That would be cool. Yeah, I had a one of the the companies next to mine in New York. They he had a, a signed. Um, What's the the guitars from uh, Aerosmith? Um, Joey Perry. Joe, Joe Perry. 
Joe he Perry, had a Joe yeah. Perry signed guitar. That's crazy. Uh, so I had a Glee cast signed guitar by like the, by thirty people from season one that I got from a uh, Paley Fest, and uh, one of our customers, you know, they have it now. But that was the only like guitar. The thing was took up a lot of space storage wise and shipping. I got a retro replay T shirt signed by the cast of Last of Us. Nice. That game is insane. That's really cool. It's sitting somewhere. Troy now. plays does the voice on Last of Us, doesn't he? Yeah, he plays uh, Joel. Oh, yeah. You know those those the uh, those games where you kind of like when you get to the end and you set the con- like same thing with books too. Like um, I, I'm really into uh, into books, and I feel like The Last of Us was very similar to. Do you ever if you either of you have read The Road? Yes, the, the, and the you, road you, and the Last of Us are just too depressing, man. I just want to like scratch the back of my throat with a forty-five <laughs> after playing that game or reading that book. It's you can't shower long enough after no. those things. And you just, you just like I remember, I had the same feeling. Like I with the road, I closed the book. With the Last of Us, I put the controller down and I just sat there in silence. And I'm just like, the road's brutal. It's what's brutal. the point? Like, what's the point? Why am I here? <laughs> But it's just amazing, though the 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 power of storytelling in games, and that's what I've said. Like Absolutely. I've loved playing games for so long because of the stories. Like I always put them on easy mode because I just don't have the time to try to play them on hard, you know, and get that good at them. And so, because I'm playing yeah. them to play along with the story, and you know, I don't want to. Have to I like I I what I miss about video games and the way that I got into video games was. We used to get two Xboxes, and I bought like a gigabyte LAN thing, and uh, I'd have Nathan and Alan and like uh, all kinds of different people. We'd have these Halo parties, and they would kind of come over for dinner, and we'd play four on four back to back, and we'd have a TV on one side and a projector on the other. It was all like, don't look, don't turn around, you're going to see where I am. And then, we, but we'd have dinner, and we'd play, and we'd put the down, and we'd talk, and we'd drink, and that that's when that stopped, and everything went online, and you played online. I stopped, like I missed that part, and you know, and now they you got to have different accounts, you got to go online. Like I can't play; it's very hard to find a game where I can play with both of my daughters at the same time. Like there, there's less and less split, less and less split. You screen. have to get into board like, gaming. Board game, the new, board the new yeah, generation we, oh, yeah, of board games, good. right? Over the last yeah. fifteen years, are some of the most amazing things. Do. Like uh, I do a board yeah. game night every week, and I have friends over, and then I do a D and D, you know, on Saturday for some kids, you know, where I yeah. where my nephew who's nine and a couple other friends of his, uh, we do a D and D thing, and that's that's where if you want that experience back that's the kind of things that you do set up a D with you alan and nathan i'd pay a thousand dollars to watch that <laughs> well isn't it will we will wheaton used to do he, he had yeah. his tabletop yeah. show yeah they, he loved board games he loves them felicia yeah. loves them and we that was a thing we we still do that nathan has a game night but we play um we don't play a board game now. We play that card game, uh, Mafia Wars. Oh, God, we've been playing that for years. Uh, uh, what I love about the games is like when you can play together. Uh, we used to play this game. It was a car game called uh, – shit, I can't remember. But we'd have the steering wheel and the pedals, and it was it – was, we could have four people racing at the same time. Was it Gran Turismo? Uh, no, it was before that even. I'm aging myself. Uh, uh, fuck, I can't remember. And then they stopped. Doing the split screen on it, and you can't now. Is you it, can't play. Can't play together anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. I personally, I personally feel well. For me, um, the last game, like what you're talking about, the last great game like that was Left for Dead. That yeah. game, you would. We, I remember we'd we get together at my place. We'd get Taco Bell or pizza, and we would play the hell out of Left for Dead. Yeah, and it was just fun. everybody together playing this fun zombie game and it's just like it, it's amazing because it was such a good concept the fact that they haven't replicated it again. well my sister's yeah now you play by your well on. my sister's obsessed with mario party and the wii yeah because that's where <laughs> a lot of those games are is on the wii now or not the wii yeah. but yeah. the but you Switch. play online with each other right you play you play no, online you i miss play, playing uh, you can play, you together. play together it's all about uh playing together the nintendo systems like the mark yeah the switch good. is all about like somebody 
somebody's holding a controller while the other person's holding the screen controller and they can do stuff like it's more it brings more friends and family together but it's not the you know there's a different play style to something like mario party and left for dead but they have mario (laughs) kart as well which is you know the race yeah mario kart's another you might try the switch with a lot of those if you want that style of gaming i will yeah i'm gonna do that thanks stacy schaefer for buying one of the signed spectrum comics stacy's awesome yeah stacy is fantastic uh, a card game, Monster Lab card game, by that that uh, Liam made. You ever play that? Uh, no, I'll have to check it out. Uh, I'll give you one if you want. Right. I got them. The somebody yeah. just said Hogwarts Legacy on PS5. So played maybe it. there's play not PS5. I played it on PS4. Oh, PS5 is coming out, right? Yeah, yeah. They they put P- Hogwarts Legacy PS5. Oh, Hogwarts Legacy. I thought you said Hogwarts Lego. I played Hogwarts Lego. No, <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy, uh, PS5. Maybe no. it's going to be a uh, Left for Dead game set in the Harry Potter world. So, yeah. I'll play that. Yeah. Well, we just I'll we just scored us uh, just before we logged in some PS5s. Yep. Yeah, I just heard Drew just got one too for uh, Retro Replay. Nice. It's cool. so funny. I wonder if you want to start getting conspiracy theory. So about what was it like a week, week and a half ago, Xbox comes out and and lays out all of their plans and their pre-orders and everything. And then so now today PlayStation comes out, unveils theirs. But now all the retailers accidentally drop the PlayStation pre-orders early. So it's like they did. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be until like the 22nd until the pre-orders opened. Yeah, so PlayStation came out and was like, here's ours. You can pre-order it this date. But now they're all, PlayStation 5 has dropped it like every single, uh, GameStop, Target, Walmart, Best Buy. PlayStation 5 has dropped everywhere, and Xbox is sitting there. So it's kind of like now. Well, the Xbox is also going after a different market. See, the Xbox, what they're trying to do is they have a subscription plan where you pay 35 bucks yeah, a I month. Yeah, I saw that. You get the Xbox and uh, uh, access to their unlimited games plan. So you don't even need to buy. I can't take any more subscriptions. I don't. <laughs> I, I probably have subscriptions that I'm paying and I don't even know I have anymore. Like there's there's so many subscriptions. This subscriptions that. Oh my god. All right. Well, let's get Just back let to buy uh, the damn con thing. man. What, yeah. Do you have? Uh, I'm guessing you have plenty of interesting stories on sets, or maybe somebody got mad <laughs> that you guys were parodying them, or. Yeah. No, it was the best audience. No one ever got mad at us. One of the, one of the, no, it was great. It was the best experience of my life. What well, one funny thing that did happen though was during in season two where we we're doing the big Shaka Khan and Liam McIntyre is there and uh, and him and Alan's character Ray Nearly are you know Ray's mad that Australians are taking all the roles from Americans and uh, they in the middle of the con floor they go to have a fight and. We rehearse the fight, and everybody's around egging them on to fight. And, you know, with fighting, you have to rehearse it. And the, on, on the third take, when Alan swings at Liam, Liam, instead of pulling out, duck went in. And you heard that punch throughout the entire convention. Like, it was just this smack sound and, <laughs> and alan just like hugged him just like jumped on him with a hug like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry but you can ask liam he'll still talk about it. the time he got punched by alan on the con floor and he just <laughs> drilled him right in the jaw uh, and, how, yeah so that was the, that was the most violent how got. hot was the set the day you guys did the the space the astronaut suit scene where alan's just hanging uh suspended in the astronaut it, suit it, that wasn't hot. We were at Occidental Studios. It was completely oh, air conditioned. Nice. The hot one was when in season one we did the comic book signing at that comic book store out in the valley, and it was the hottest day on record out there or something. Oh, the it was scene like a, at the dumpster. No, no, that was at that famous music studio. No, what's that comic book store out in the valley? Um, uh, it's a famous comic book store, and we shot there. And it was so hot. Starts with an A, I think. It's um... It's like 120 degrees outside. We were like putting sheets up to prevent the sun from coming in. Like it was just a 
heat box. Could make it cold. Was it Collector's Paradise? I remember that from when I, I used to live no, down there. I think Collector's is it Collector's I don't Paradise? Think so. it, I can't. It's a, it's a fairly popular one. I think it starts with an A, but um, out in Van Nuys. But uh, yeah, what was so, great about that episode? That, uh, that I mean that that whole episode was perfect from the beginning to the end with you know the. Uh, his character doing the you know the race the racist voice and him <laughs> having so to funny. go do the panel about it and Milo's amazing. I've talked on the show before. When I first met Milo, he wanted to like start a fight with me because I was there to do a signing with Hayden Penetier. I think it was the same weekend yeah. that I that I met you, and they were filming Heroes, you know, uh, about a mile away, and I and I showed up on set. And I had arranged the signing with Hayden's mom, and she, I guess they did, forgot to tell her or didn't know. So I'm like coming to set, and Hayden and uh, Milo just started dating. I think, or well, she might have been 17, so they might not officially have been dating it. But then, like, so she comes out of the trailer, and he's about five feet behind her, and she's confused, and he's looking at me like ready to jump off if I start something. And she's like, "Can I help you?" And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm here to do the signing. And then she just relaxed. She's like, oh, okay, my mom mentioned something about this. And then you see him relax. <laughs> you know, it was just funny. To, to, but he's a great guy. I, I got to hang out with him a few oh, times. Yeah. And I told the story about wow, that was awesome. how he would, when uh, there was a Heroes for Autism event, and they were auctioning off uh, a photo that he took of Hayden and then a photo of, that Hayden took of him. And his parents were there. I got to meet them. And he was guarding the photo and not letting anybody bid on it because he wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, he was just hanging out by the photo, like, the entire night. And, no, but he's a good guy. He's a great so guy. So is, is there a good story about uh, Milo, like, uh, with Leslie, about getting him on it? Milo was a, uh, Alan came through Alan. Uh, it, we did this, uh, he first came to that amazing episode with Nolan, uh, where they're doing the game voices. That's the funniest thing. Mr. That is the funniest five minutes of film you've ever watched. It was so good. <laughs> and, and he came, if you remember out in the back, uh, by the dumpster, that's Milo's motorcycle. He came in a motor on a motorcycle to the shoot and Alan was like, Can we use your motorcycle? <laughs> and so we used the motorcycle. That's my dog, by the way. My very fierce white cockapoo. <laughs> ready to kill somebody. Yeah, it sounds uh, threatening. Yeah. So yeah, so that's uh, and I and I had to shoot the I had to shoot his autograph photo. Like I had to <laughs> like pretend he's doing his headshot and so we had the to go fake. Poster. <laughs> yeah. So I shot that. I was just like, you know, between takes, I go, come on, I got a camera, let's go over here. And I put him against the wall and made him do his best James Dean, and I photographed him for that. I still have all of those photos. So what exactly happened? Why wasn't there a season three? Or just Did Alan just get busy? Yeah, it's just too much work for him. It's too, when you're that creative and you're that invested, it's and you don't have the money to have the proper support people around you, it's just, it's, it takes your toll and it's just too much work. And, you know, he said it a million times. He goes, I'm an actor. I want to be an actor. And he was just, it was, he was doing too much work. It was too, he, he's so, he's so intense on every little element. And that's a lot to, it's a lot of burden to carry and having, carrying that creative weight and everything right down to, you know, what color the cups are on the table it's uh, it, it it wears on you. It's not everybody can do that all the time, and be an actor, and write it, and direct. You know, I mean, it's it was too much. So it wasn't uh, for his own health, and uh, it was not a good decision to continue. So we did knowing that he wrote everything, like all the details, makes it even more impressive. Well, see, I was always under the impression that you guys worked together on it, and uh, for the writing part, so. No, that's that's his baby. I mean, we had a writing room in the second season. Um, uh, our friend Josh helped. There were some other writers on there. The the writers from that one TV show that remake uh, once a month, once once a time once I can't remember what's called. Uh, so he had people helping him, but it was still him. It was it, nobody had nobody. He's just I, I say it again. He's genius. He's freaking brilliant. 
Yeah, uh, I would. If he's ready to go again, I'll jump all over it. He wants so to do I'm something. Ass- I'll do it. So again. I'm assuming most of the things were based on something that happened. Like everything, as, mo- as most good much every, Yeah, pretty much everything comes from some. So, do you know the story behind the 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 baby doll convention? Yeah. Is that something you can share? Yeah, he went to a convention once, and he was worried about he was in the wrong convention because he's standing in line to check in, and there's all these dolls around him. There's all these women with dolls. He thought they were babies, but they were actually dolls, and he thought he was at the wrong convention. And, you know, you see that scene where uh, our visual effects guys are all done up, Billy Brooks and... uh, and his partner uh, were coming down the stairs in zombie makeup, and he had the similar thing. He saw, he saw uh, a sci-fi people in the lobby, and he goes, "Oh no, no, I'm I am at the right place." So every and then from that he came up with the whole uh, idea with the character and that. So everything from Con Man was rooted in something that happened to those guys during their Firefly. You know, con and I, I recognize it's some so of the fun. stories because, like I said, I did conventions for like three or four years. All like, I did one, one every weekend for an entire summer once, and so and I've worked with some of the people and and some of those stories and the 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 list of stories that you could tell is phenom is unlimited. You know, it's just a different world. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's so true. Bobby is based on a real character. Uh, uh, there's just there's so much there's so much that uh, that you can pull from. So and we did, but even just from like just from the the concept of I was at a convention once and I was confused I was at the wrong convention to the details of how she was kissing was just, <laughs> it was like the shit that he was coming up with is just great. Yeah that 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 came out of that came out of not. Like having to deal with, I got to kiss this person like in real life, and yeah, and it's awkward. And then Alan just takes those things and makes them funny. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So she <laughs> took what was because it's our friends; they're all friends, and like I got to make out with you. And and so to make it easier, he turned it into this comedy, and it was brilliant. That was always one of my favorite then, lines. To, you know, no, she's that that she looks like that hot Cylon. No, no, the other one. No, no, the other, <laughs> the, one. The other one. No, no, the that's one. a dude. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every episode had like a had like an iconic just a line like the with that one it was the it's happening, and uh, that was that was just every time it would be like it's happening oh yeah it's happening that was now, just. Do you think the show would have been? I think the show benefited from that five minute per episode kind of limit five or so, uh, versus like a twenty minute. Well, we were going to do it just as uh, as YouTube stuff. Right. You know, it, finding the home for it was the hardest part because we were in that weird time frame of it and talking with different people. We had an offer to put it on Pop, uh, and we didn't know what that channel was. Lionsgate was asking us. They had acquired it from CBS, and they only had one other show on there called Shits Creek. Up Shits was like their first season, and we didn't know what that was. If I could have done it all over again, 2020 hindsight, I would have said yes to that and put it on there. We may be on, you know, might have been on Netflix now doing it, doing it an easier route. Um, had more money to make it a little easier for us, uh, but yeah, you know, it, it turned out the way it turned out. Somebody needs That's to what we sign should do. Him. We should create a we should create a thing to, for Netflix to to uh, option it. Be hard though. I mean, Nathan's doing uh, Rookie now, and Alan's got that amazing show coming out on Sci Fi Alien. Is it what's it called? Alien, not Alien Nation. Uh, I saw some about so it like that. a year ago, yeah. and I haven't it heard anything. So good. So there. The are... fact that we're talking, you know, the the irony that we're talking about this, and you're literally like, yeah, Nathan's got this police show on like a major network, and Alan's got this show coming up on Sci-Fi. Well, it's one of those things that, like, that's the reason why, like, you know, you always run into the problem with Firefly, right? Like, uh, a, yeah. if you remake it, it'll never be as good to the to what people have built up over the years. Right and B getting everybody on the same schedule. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. again, Resident Alien, that's the name of it, Resident Alien. But I thought it, that's what I loved about Con Man was because it kind of did it a right. little bit. It put, still put him on a spaceship, but it gave him in a whole different world. But everybody that loved Firefly could still point fingers at the Firefly people. Yeah. So I, I thought it was a very unique way to do it without actually having to do Firefly. I'm, I mean, I swear to God, we could, uh, I could go on and start a crowdfund campaign tomorrow and raise enough money to buy Firefly and go get it done. I guarantee really? you. Really? Because I, I know Netflix was how much debating it, that. you know, for a little while. So my understanding of it is the rights are a little screwed up because of the movie and the TV show. So part the rights are split in some weird mm -hmm. way. Don't quote me. I could be completely wrong. But that's. That's part of the problem why it can't get redone, is because the the TV show and the and the movies kind of split the rights or screwed the rights up, so it's a little harder to to pull I'm it off. I'm in the camp of you're better off licensing the universe and doing a new show in that universe. Um, yeah, that'd be cool too. But where would you go? Well, there's so much. I mean, if if you take a look at the there's a shows on sci-fi. There was two of them, and they basically took the two main themes of Firefly and Serenity and split them into two shows. Uh, one was called The Expanse and the other mm -hmm. was called yeah. Dark... I hear that's really or good. Not the, not the Expanse, sorry. That's, that's, the Expanse is amazing. No, but it was called... Uh, there was Dark Matter and oh, it was the Bounty Hunter ones with... Uh, she's... Uh, you know, that's what Spectrum was supposed to be called. It was supposed to be called Dark Matter. Was it? <laughs> and then Dark Matter came out, and we had to change the name. And because it lives in the software world, we were going to call it the Rings of Orbis. But Alan wanted it to be about a ship, like it wanted to be named after a ship. And so we called it, it got called Spectrum. Hey, really quick before we keep going, uh, we got Mike Lewis uh, on and... Um, he is asking, I think he tuned in a little bit late. So we have PJ Harzma here with us and, uh, PJ is a writer, author, producer, and, um, we've been talking a lot about if you have not seen it, Google, um, con man with Alan Tudyk. Uh, I believe you can find it on Amazon and each season is like, you can get on YouTube too. We can get comment season one on YouTube. Can you? And okay, Mark, you in the in the description, you should lose Red Bear Publishing and put up retroreplay.com. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, because that Red Bear Publishing is a That's the other thing. Retro replay. So he is involved with a lot of projects. He's also like we've talked personal friends with Nathan Philly and Alan Tudyk. Uh, if you are a fan of Firefly Serenity, that's what we're kind of talking about. So just to fill uh, Mike in, he was asking some questions. Yeah, about I'll go through. Who, who, who's the voice he's hearing? I'll, who's that guy? In I'll the go middle? through and uh, yeah. I'll uh, change those links whenever I repo uh, replace the edit version. Sure. But uh, Killjoys was the name of that show, um, and. Oh, uh, there, what it was is uh, both of those shows, Killjoys and Dark Matter, took major themes, especially of the corporate yeah. uh, corporations running an entire separate um, galaxy, basically, and uh, becoming like wars between the corporations. Like Killjoys, uh, they were Killjoys are like bounty hunters and uh, like cops, but they had no boundaries. Right, so like if somebody broke uh, a law or something, the corporations could have put a bounty on somebody, and the Killjoys would go and take care of it. Oh, I gotta watch that. Um, but yeah, both of those could have been set in a Firefly universe, um, and there's just so many things that were built in that world that that could be expanded. Yeah, that's what I want to do with the software world. That's like it's the same thing. Uh, Stephen Martineer did the, some of the covers, and we talked. We were going to try to do a book together, and he talked about that. It's like when you have that universe that has so many entry points and exit points, that's when you can make something truly magical. You know, like they did with Star Wars. Uh, you know, and the, the Firefly universe was big, so yeah, you could absolutely yeah, I mean, do that. The, to explore, like I said, the Blue Sun. You could just do a Blue Sun TV show, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> but. That's been always that's always been my thought is and I get the the idea and the logistics behind actually bringing Firefly back and bringing the cast back like what we talked about with Alan's got a show Nathan's got a show 
most of the people involved with that have something going on. But if you do something where it's the Firefly universe and every episode or every other episode, you have one of these people do like a guest star to bring it in, you're still going to pull that whole fan base in. I don't know if you could do that, yeah. though, because you'd probably want to set it in a different time in place kind of like you know i don't know I, I think it would be hard to just bring somebody in like maybe you could do like if it's in the past bring book in as a sh- as a operative in an episode you know something like that well everybody's older don't worry you're gonna have to do it in the future yeah like, yeah they, <laughs> well i'm saying he doesn't have to be back. long glass because he's obviously it. not with us anymore yeah but uh as long as they don't do what they did what is it the, i what was it, I, were the one where they took robert de niro and made him try to make him look young Oh, the Irish, they CG the entire thing. Yeah, I couldn't stop looking at his eyes in the whole movie. Yeah, the Irishman. I couldn't stop looking at his eyes the whole movie. But uh... yeah, you catch on like you catch um, catch on to those things when your you, your mind knows that, that it's not right. <laughs> like I, I, I'm for the YouTube filter. Everyone. I'd like that YouTube filter to be on there, you know, so you can just glot, make yourself look ten years younger, but. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Not gonna I don't know. Happen. I think I think yeah. you're aging well. You know. Why? Well, thank you. I've got I've I've got put on the COVID thirty five. Used to be COVID nineteen, but now it's COVID thirty five. <laughs> Pushing for COVID forty. There you go. I appreciate that none of us, the three of us, have not followed the uh, CDC's recommendation to remove facial hair. <laughs> that's <laughs> that was the thing. That's a recommendation. <laughs> yeah. I. Um, okay. Now they're yeah, crossing the path. Yeah. 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 It was I never even facial heard hair. that. It was both for for uh, hygiene and apparently for more proper mask fitting. I'm like one of the people. <laughs> How did that go over middle? America? I'm one of the people that this didn't affect very much because of the fact that I already was like a homebody now that I'm living in Arizona. That like I hardly <laughs> left my house anyways, and I already ordered everything through Amazon and like Walmart grocery yeah. delivery. So it's like, what? I can't leave my house. Oh no. I remember when it like I to this day I'm in March 16th I was like we're in a lockdown and we were scared like everybody don't touch anything I remember going out there don't touch it and their gloves and washing the groceries down everybody's a little more relaxed these days it seems well both of you guys are in like forest fire modes now oh yeah, yeah. it's all orangey all the time well, see we had to yeah. cancel last week's shows because uh, Michael was caught between two fires one in uh, Medford and one in Ashland and he's like yeah. right in the middle of both of those. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was uh, 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 interesting two weeks, but as long as you're safe, simmer down. Yeah, no. But uh, as we say that, he freezes up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, did I lose somebody? I lost somebody. But uh, so this gorilla show with Alan, do you think you'll ever get to release? We it? actually end. No, I, I'll ne- I've been told to to never show it. I have six episodes. I have. Uh, I also have. Uh, uh, I've got lots of footage I can't show. I uh, I filmed uh, this uh, video for Comic Con probably like ten or twelve years ago. It was called yeah. My Date with Kaylee, and I premiered uh-huh. it. You know, uh, on our first podcast together, as like a thing. It's like a. It was for a sixty second film competition. Yeah. Uh, for San Diego's uh, Comic Con, and I was like, you know what? I haven't edited, I haven't done anything, and I wanted to flex my creative muscle, right? Yeah. And so I used to do it all in high school, and so I'm like, I'm gonna go film a romantic comedy in 60 seconds. I'm gonna do it in Central Park, right? Because I was living mm-hmm. in Manhattan at the time. And then I was like, but I want to make it geeky. I'm like, and then I'm like, oh wait, uh, I used to go to the Brown Coat Ball, and my friend has Kaylee's dress from Shindig. Right, like an exact replica. I'm like, what if I just made it my date and we do all of the cheesy Central Park cliches? So we ride in a carriage, you know, we're dancing around the fountain, you know, we're having a picnic on the, the thing, we're in the rowboat, you know, and then, you know, I uh, profess my love for Kaylee on the bridge, you know, the, the, the iconic bridge over the lake. And then my friend kicks me and wakes me up, and I'm like, they're like, you fell asleep watching Firefly again, Marco? I'm like, damn. <laughs> That's good. It's all like, be good to see. It's all in like sixty seconds. I'll, I'll send you a clip. I have it. I have it. In I have a, Do you remember the? Do you ever remember the? I don't know if you if it ever made out, but it's the 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 famous bathroom scene in the first episode of Con Man. 
where she's peeing and like passed out? No, 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 no. The, where the they're passing Felicia, the things. Felicia Day oh, stinking up the bathroom. That one, that one. No, not that. No, no, no. The very first episode, season one, where Alan goes into the bathroom. Oh, the oh, signing. The, the signing, signing in the bathroom. People are getting. Oh, the, the I, yeah. I have that re that I have that scene redone, where Alan's replaced as K two S O. From Star Wars. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's something that I can never show either. See, that's uh, and I, I watch that. See, and the, the type of person I, I, I'm watching that, and I'm like, I wonder what they did with that prop magazine that he signed and drew on Nathan's face. <laughs> I have, I have one of those. I have one of those signed. I do have that. I, that's I just, a great. That was so great. The the little signature mustache through Nathan's face. Well, the thing is, <laughs> yeah. is I I can relate because, like I said, I've done signings with a lot of actors, and you know how we were talking about Ron Glass. So yeah. I met with Ron Glass. We came up to my hotel room. He signed all the comics. And we were talking, and he uh, was talking about how depressing conventions are, and that he has nightmares about being locked in a cage and <laughs> being forced to sign all day long, and like uh, all that stuff. Like it was like a truly like a nightmare for him, wow. and uh, and stuff like that. I was like, wow, that's depressing, but keep signing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some people you know it's a it's a it's it's a lot i mean when you do comic-con San Diego comic-con for five days that's that's a that's a that's a lot it it's it's a lot and it's just the energy of all those people all the time and and if you're a celebrity you got to be on the whole it's tough man yeah I, that, I that's important. why it's every tough. time like i see online well such and such person was a jerk to me i'm like well they're a human being maybe they caught caught at the wrong time and you're asking them to sign 20 things for free and everywhere yeah. they go people are following them around and that's why i always did i never did i've never done a street signing i've never asked for an yeah, autograph well. like i've been on sets i've been i've never asked for an autograph on the street or in person ever Everybody is the center of their own movie, right? Yeah. I think some people they see them online. I mean, they see them on TV, and they just expect they know them, and they, you know, they want the same love in return. And they're like, "I've never seen you before in my life," like, like, even though you see you, me every hear, day. Oh, we're the fans. We make you. Without us, you're nothing. And I'm like, well, that's that 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 first scene, the first bar scene with, um, oh, with what's his name, where he's like, they think we're our characters. Right. Yeah, well, be the person they you want. They want you be, to be. That was the that scene I was thinking about that reminded me of Ron Glass. That was the scene because I was thinking about that scene, and it reminded me of Ron Glass and him talking about you know having nightmares of being locked in a cage and signing all day. And yeah. uh, but at the same time, he did it, and he liked meeting the fans, and he liked doing it. It was just one of those things that like he just didn't want to be where that was like his life. You know what I mean? And well, that was Ray Nearly's thing in in Con Man. He didn't want yeah. to be that guy. He didn't want to go around a convention signing. But at the same he, time, he, you know, uh, the way it is in Hollywood, right? You never know when your next paycheck is coming, right? Uh, sure. And you can make on some of those shows on the weekends more than you did like in an entire series. And you know, um, and that's where the, I have a disconnect with actor or the agents, you know. I'm like, yeah, my signing is going to take an hour. You don't have to fly anywhere. You don't have to spend the entire week. You don't have to wait in line. Yeah. And do... We're talking one hour of your time. You know what I mean? And uh, and that pays you like your rent for the next couple months. You know, like it's, you know, you know, sure. It's weird though that you can make money from just signing stuff. Well, you know it's what it is. Signing your name. What what, uh, what you know? A lot of like I deal with depression. Right. Uh, and I get very manic and into creative modes and work 20 hours here and there, you know, where I'm just on. Right. And then I'm depressed and in bed for like 15, 16 hours for like a next week, you know, and then and having something to look forward to. Like I pulled a lot of my customers and I've talked to a lot of because I uh, talked to a lot of them on Facebook and a lot of the people who are part of the club and part of the autograph of the month club are depressed and deal with depression and having that autograph to look forward to that mystery autograph every month really helps them. It gives them <laughs> something to look forward to. It gives them something to experience and something to do to break out of the norm, you know, to break out of whatever rut they're in 
they they know come the first of every month, they could look forward to to figuring out what mystery autograph they got and enjoying it. Well, that's a really good thing then. Yeah, it's there's a lot more to, and that's why I've always kept the price down at twenty dollars, and didn't want to make it any more than that. You know, I I could have raised it several times. You know, and you know, but. Again, I've one of the reasons I got into autographs was because of how expensive a lot of them were and how fake they were a lot. Mm-hmm. And are there a lot of fakes? How do you know if it's the fake or not? How do you know that they're fake? A lot of them are obvious. Yeah. A lot of them are pretty good really? fakes, but you can tell, um, and sometimes you can't tell. But I know when I, the first five autographs I ever bought on eBay were all fake. Really? Yeah, and uh, you know, like, like for example, Nathan's. You can tell Nathan's fakes out there because Nathan signs the same. He can sign a million photos and they all look identical. And they're identical. They're like identical. And then you can, Alan's, Alan's, it depends yeah. how fast he's going, what moves he in. Like, I, can't, I still can't His is this. like a bird, mm-hmm. like, a, like a, one of those, you, you see him in like, like a bird in those paintings. Yeah. You know, like yeah. in the sky. Like, Nathan said he practices. He practiced, practiced his when he was a kid. Yeah. Like you wanted to do that one day, and his is yeah, his is perfect. But I remember he knew where he was going. I, but even at shows, <laughs> I've had people like little girls come up and like, I just got a Tom Hiddleston autograph from that booth down the way, and I'm like looking at it. Yeah, this is totally not his autograph. I didn't, you know, and it's just like it's heartbreaking. You know, they just spent their hard earned money, you know, this stuff. And then there's people out there that yeah. sell them, you know, uh, and they know what they're doing, you know, and they don't care, you know, and the. To me, that's why I do what I do. And one of the things, like, you know, it's there's no reason for it. You know what I mean? And that's the problem with actors that don't sign a lot, right? Yeah. There's the ones that get uh, are the most on eBay, and the ones that are fake on eBay, right? And the ones that yeah, sign a lot, I wouldn't want to know. Like Nathan, you're not really going to run across a lot of fakes of his because of the fact that his are everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's. But there's ones that like I, like I did um, the Doctor Who guy uh, Matt Smith right, and there's yeah. people that actually sell them with like a M A T T Smith, and his is more like a yin yang symbol. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. Like you can tell like he never signs it like in print. You know what I mean? But these people that you know don't even care. They just throw those out there. Yeah, if I bought one, I wouldn't want to know if it was fake. I'd be happy. I got a signature. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't want that. <laughs> well, Don't tell me it's fake. Oh, what's blissfully his, unaware. Uh, it was got so bad with Mark Hamill. He actually went to yeah. the governor and lobbied for like laws in California. Like, there's a whole bills that Mark Hamill helped pass to fight fakes, but they never really enforced them. Really? Because they're actually pretty like they would pretty much lock down any sales of autographs, even legit ones. In California, yeah. like yeah. the laws yeah. are insane. Like you have to. That's one of the reasons why. Like I have a whole bunch of extra stuff in my database for my for my serial numbers and stuff. Is mm-hmm. you know because of some of the laws in California. And luckily, like with the when I do a signing on Zoom, I have like recordings on some of them, so that I have you know the video recording of the signings and stuff like that because it helps. A lot of work, but. All right. Well, so I, got a, I got a random question, and I mean, I'm, we'll I'm either going to sound the last s- one, I think. For now. all right, Let, random last question. Yep. And I'll sound either really brilliant or I'll be super off base. But I got to know if you know this or not. Was Alan like you brought up the signing uh, scene in the bathroom, yeah. and even I think with the uh, with the action figure a little bit, I almost feel like he was kind of channeling um, Andy Kaufman's Latka. <laughs> With his voice, you know that brought that got brought up. Yeah, that that got brought up. Yeah, I feel I feel not I feel like not off face off face, and somebody else felt that way too. <laughs> yeah, that got brought up, but I don't think that was his intention. Uh, but yeah, that got brought up, and I think did he do it differently? I know exactly what you're talking about. I can't remember. That that, I, that I bathroom remember. scene when he when he changes his voice, I was like, yeah. "Is he trying to be? Is he doing like a latka impression right now?" Because yeah, it was I good. Think, <laughs> I think he said something like that. He goes, "That's my best latka," or something like that. Yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> he does make that little voice. It was it was it was good. So I'm glad that that I uh, I appreciate that scene even more now with the uh, the latka you know. impression. Now you know. 
Well, listen, guys, this was great. I love yeah. this. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us, and uh, it's a blast. Like I said, uh, uh, I've been telling stories about you know this stuff, and it's you know it's great to put a face to it. And I got to get Frank on here now. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna see him this weekend. I'll tell him when you call to do it. Okay. We got some drinking to do this weekend. <laughs> yeah, if anybody out there hasn't watched it, oh, there's gonna be links below. But I think uh, PJ was saying you can get it on YouTube. You can get it on. I know I got it on Amazon. Go get Con Man. I've already watched it once. I'm gonna be. I was telling Marco I got a watch party this Saturday where we're gonna have a friend over and literally watch it again. It, it's so fun. yeah. I think on it's Amazon really has season one and two for four ninety nine each for the entire season for each season. Yeah. So, okay, guys. Thanks again. I'll put it all, all right, in the guys. comments. Thanks so much. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Marco. Take care. All right. Bye, bye. guys. All right. Well, he's out. And uh, all right, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the stream here. Bye, everybody. Oops.